Hey art nerds, I am back with you with another three possible deals from Dollar Tree. Today we are taking a look at artist watercolor pencils, artist metallic pencils, and artist graphite pencils. Each of these contains six pencils inside the pack. The pack is very simple cardboard, and they were each a dollar. And I picked these up at the Elmwood Dollar Tree, but I encourage you to check out your own Dollar Tree to look around, and if you can't find them and you really, really want them, consider ordering them through the site. Now you guys might be wondering why I'm doing a bunch of Dollar Tree reviews. Well, I am back in Louisiana, and whenever I'm in Louisiana, I always start thinking about accessible art supplies, maybe because I'm teaching classes. So I am reviewing these art supplies to help parents, to help teachers, and to help people on a budget find art supplies that may or may not be a good fit for them. So let's go ahead and get cracking on today's review. We're going to start with the Artist Watercolor Pencils. The packaging is really pretty plain. There's no additional information here. There's just a barcode. And these were imported in the US by Greenbrier International. So perhaps these were made by another company and they're being distributed here. And they are under the imprint Paper Craft and these were purchased in the Arts and Crafts section. Now, Dollar Tree does sell color pencils pretty frequently, and I have some other color pencils from Dollar Tree that we're going to take a look at later on. But these are watercolor pencils, and I apologize for all the rolly rolly. And already I'm noticing that the body has an interesting sort of matte texture. It's not uncomfortable, and it seems to be applied to the surface of the pencil because it's like a sticker. I feel a seam right here. And we get six watercolor pencils in this pack. They are not labeled. There is no body screening on them, so we're just going to have to go by swatching. It looks like we get a purple, a red, a green, a blue, possibly an orange, and a yellow. So I'm going to swatch them on drawing paper first, and then I'm going to swatch them on watercolor paper. There seems to be decent color lay down on the drawing paper, good coverage. The lead does not seem particularly brittle or any more brittle than any other inexpensive watercolor pencil. I'm going to compare these the most to Crayola watercolor pencils and to Crayola color pencils because I think that's probably what they're most the, comp the, the most comparable comparison. I do have some artist grade watercolor pencils on hand that I can compare these two as well. The color selection isn't bad either. For six pencils, you really have to be choosy about what you include in a pack. And the blue is sort of a, sort of a cerulean blue. It's kind of a middle of the road blue. It can be mixed with reds. It can be mixed with yellows. It can kind of go a little bit further than if we went with a straight cool influence blue or a straight warm influence blue. So I'm gonna try to do a blended rainbow with these next. They are pretty roly poly though. That's, I think, my biggest complaint about them right now. So it's really nice to have something I purchased from Dollar Tree, an art supply I purchased from Dollar Tree that's performing decently well. Um, when I reviewed the Jot watercolor brushes, both the synthetic and the natural fibers, I was pretty disappointed. They performed pretty poorly. So it's nice to have a positive review and it's nice to have something I, I can maybe recommend to other artists. kind of blending back and forth just to see how blendable these are. I'll just remove the rest from the paper since they are so rolly prone.
These could be a good fit for my coloring book fans who are looking for something more accessible or perhaps for a teacher or a church group that's on a budget and needs to provide supplies for the class. These could be a good fit for that, at least so far. All right, so that is the dry test. We are going to do the wet watercolor swatch test here on Canton XL watercolor paper. It is a fairly inexpensive watercolor paper. I would be doing my testing on uh, Dollar Tree watercolor paper if my Dollar Tree, um, and I hit like five of them now, um, if they carried watercolor paper, if I found watercolor paper, and I do know that other Dollar Trees may carry that. So that's something you may want to look out for in your local area. But Canton XL is a very inexpensive watercolor paper that you can find everywhere from Walmart to Michaels to most art supply stores. So it's pretty accessible as well. I'm going to go grab a cup of clean water and we're actually going to use some of the jot brushes from last night. I'm going to grab those as well and get back with you guys. So I'm going to run this test pretty similarly. We're going to do a swatch of each color, then we're going to do a blended rainbow. Decent coverage on the watercolor paper. The watercolor paper has a little bit more tooth and watercolor brushes are typically designed to be used on paper with more tooth. So I'm getting a little bit better coverage. They're not hard to use. I'm not finding them overly waxy. I'm not disappointed in their pigment load. These might be a really solid, inexpensive little watercolor pencil. Could also be good for someone going on a trip. Maybe don't wanna bring a lot of art supplies, don't wanna bring any art supplies that if you forgot, if you lost, if you left, it would be a problem. These could be a good fit for that. Of course, the best way to tell I'm gonna be swatching them. So I have a cup of distilled water over to my side and I have one of the Jot brushes from an earlier review. I recommend you guys check that review out. I'll also show you guys how to clean and condition brushes. All right, not bad actually, decent activation. The color, the pigment load isn't quite as rich as I thought, but it's not bad. And the color activates quickly, it moves easily. So I think I'm going to do a rainbow and I'm also gonna do a color wheel. All right, so, so far, not bad. Um, decently heartened by what I'm seeing. Let's do a color rainbow next. I'll just move those off to the side. I am going to need to sharpen them pretty soon, at least the purple, since I'm kind of wearing it down. What do you guys think? Do you have any particular art supply favorites that you always pick up from your own Dollar Tree? Do you have any sort of secrets that you're like, oh, this supply is the best and I only get it from Dollar Tree? I've been a big fan of stores like Muji and Daiso for a long time, so I'm not really talking about those kind of stores that already kind of offer their higher quality goods for a dollar. I'm really talking about Dollar Tree, American Dollar Tree specifically. But if you're in Canada, I know you guys have like a different chain. I'd be interested in hearing about those as well, as well as um, Poundland or One Euro stores, any of those kind of stores where they sell goods for one unit of your currency or less. another layer of color. We're not really getting a very blended rainbow. If I was a bit more careful, we could possibly do that. Now, let's see what 
kind of blends we can get with this. not bad. So what I think I might do, I have two other color pencil packs I wanted to review today, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to break those up into separate videos so we can spend a little bit more time kind of working on these. So I'm going to do a really kind of cheap color wheel and I'm going to try to get a lot of pigment down on the paper. So I'm going to do that. I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, we have kind of a basic color wheel. Now let's go ahead and start mixing these colors. I'm also going to try doing blended mixes. And I'm kind of tempted to also do, um, with watercolor pencils, one of the techniques you can use for better coverage is you can apply a layer of watercolor pencil, kind of watercolor it out, and then apply color on top of that. So I think that might be another excellent test. But so far, these aren't too bad. Of course, we do also need to test things like reactability, how prone they are to reactivate if you apply another layer on top. So while this dries, I'm going to go ahead and do some layered color blends. We'll start with yellow. And we have an orange, but I'm going to do red on top of it. And we have yellow. And I'll do orange on top of it. yellow again, and we'll do blue on top of that, and then yellow and green. Ready, I can see the colors optically blending. That's when your eye blends the two colors together, even though they are distinct colors on the paper. And then we have green. That was yellow and red. This is yellow and orange. Next is yellow and blue. And then yellow and green. Seems like the green may be lifted up a little bit more easily than the yellow. Next, let's do blue and red. Then we're going to do blue and green. And then we're going to do blue and purple and blue and yellow. This kind of makes me excited for the upcoming field test where I put a bunch of Dollar Tree art supplies to the test because these are performing decently well. Like I know what I can do with these. I know how I can use these. So we have some optical blending yet again. Now we're gonna do some physical blending with a wet jot watercolor brush. I just wanted to see what kind of purple we could maybe get with the red and the blue. I think the blue is just a little bit too sky blue, too cerulean to really give us much of a purple. But fortunately, they included a purple in our little pack. Then let's try mixing some browns because we don't have any browns. So we're going to take orange and we're going to put blue on it. So we're basically mixing complementary colors and you see we get kind of a grayish color here. Then we're going to do yellow and purple. And then we're going to do red and green. Looks 
excited about these though guys like these are better than I expected them to be so that is our orange and blue we do get a brown it is kind of a muted brown color it would be difficult maybe to build up this color now we have the yellow and the purple I'm noticing the purple is way more prone to mix than the yellow and then we have the red and green so I think of these mixes, the orange and blue might be the most useful, but I would encourage you guys to, of course, do some experimenting on your own. And I go back into our color wheel and just kind of activate our purest version of the color. I may even go back and recolor that later. So really, my only complaint with these watercolor brushes is they're just a little bit muted. They're not, there's not a lot of pigment to them. Um, they do reactivate really well. You can do some color blends with them. It would be interesting to see what you can achieve with them if you kind of push them a little bit more. So the Jot watercolor pencils, are not the Jot, they're like artist brand watercolor pencils. They're not bad. They're not bad watercolor pencils at all. They're certainly worth a dollar. And um, I look forward to playing with them a little bit more in the future and uh, kind of seeing how far I can push them later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this whole page to dry and then I'm going to relayer our color wheel so we can see whether or not these colors layer well and how they reactivate. Alright arty friends, so I have been gone for about 30 minutes. This is now dry. The colors do seem a lot less saturated than they were when they were first wet. That's not uncommon for watercolors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reapply. Some of our color and kind of reblend it and see if we can't get something a little bit more saturated. But you guys can see that the watercolor pencil does go over prior layers of watercolor pretty well. So this could be used if you're a color pencil artist, for example, and you're looking for kind of a cleaner fill or um, an easier way to fill a large area. This could be one such way. Alright, so I have reapplied our main colors. Now I'm going to grab a wet watercolor brush. And we're going to try blending and layering them again. Also applying a swatch of the resulting color sort of outside the perimeter so we can get a good look at it. So what do you think? Do you think Dollar Tree's paper crap watercolor pencils are a buy or a skip? Are they worth it for you and your class or for your own artistic needs? Or, hmm, nah, you're gonna stick with what you already have or you're gonna continue looking? All right, so I think the biggest problem with these that the colors are really muted. So the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna try working directly from the source. We're gonna try either wetting the pencils or working from the pigment in the pencils using our watercolor brush. So let's start by working with the pigment already in the pencil. So I'm gonna take our wet watercolor brush, I'm gonna brush it against the lead. And this gives us a more saturated version of the color. So that is already heartening to see. Next, we're gonna dip one of our pencils in water and try drawing with that. That's one of the ways Crayola kind of recommends you work with their watercolor pencils. And that also works 
it's gonna give you a really dark, intense version of the color. which you can then kind of blend out if necessary. So if you're not getting enough saturation or if the colors appear too scrubby for you, this could be a really good alternative. In fact, I'm going to kind of swatch all six colors with the brush on the lead. And then it'll give us a little bit of a better idea. But I'm kind of excited about these because I'm kind of setting aside all the art supplies that either need, you know, more careful, ex whoa, did not meant to do that, but that is a technique you can do, a splatter technique. I'm setting aside all the art supplies that I think perform well enough or um, I think need additional time, additional reviewing for our upcoming field test. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. I'm both looking forward to it and kind of dread dreading it. But I think we have put the Papercraft Artist watercolor pencils to a pretty decent test. Okay guys, I think this about wraps it up for our artist watercolor pencils from Dollar Tree. You receive six watercolor pencils, blue, red, purple, orange, green, and yellow with a matte black sticker body for just one dollar over at your local Dollar Tree. This review was in no way requested by Dollar Tree, sponsored by Dollar Tree. I went to the Dollar Tree and I paid my dollar for my pencils, so <laughs> this is about as unbiased as it can get. If you are looking for more affordable art supply reviews, stick around. I have a whole Dollar Tree series coming up on this channel. It's a little bit crazy, including two other artist pencil sets and more watercolors to come. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification so you never miss an update. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I hope this video was useful, helpful, and informative. I hope it will help you when you are shopping at your own local Dollar Tree. And I hope it goes to show that not everything from Dollar Tree is the absolute worst. Just those Jot watercolor brushes are the absolute worst. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys!